I'm Amy the Bunny Lady, and this is my partner Elusive, Ellie for short. Give me a kiss. <laughs> and we're here to tell you about everything to do with rabbits. And today we are going to talk about how to have a rabbit in a small apartment. Before we get started, I just want to invite you to hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell out there. I put a new video out every week, so that way you won't miss all of my tips on how to have a happy and healthy bunny in your home. Now on to the list. The first thing that you want to do is to make sure that your apartment complex or condo or whatever allows rabbits. This is actually less straightforward than you think it would be uh, because um, a lot of a lot of uh, apartment complexes will say that they allow cats and dogs rather than saying they allow all pets. It did actually happen to a friend of mine where she went and asked specifically to an apartment complex that allows cats and dogs, okay, so can I have my pet rabbit? And they said no because they just didn't have a policy for rabbits. They only had a policy for cats and dogs, so and the other pets weren't allowed. You want to double check with your management just to be sure that your rabbit will be able to stay with you because if uh, your rabbit's not allowed and then they find out, then they might <laughs> try to kick your rabbit out and that's not good, that's not good. You don't want to be in that situation, so always check first. Tip number two, you want to make sure that you get your rabbit spayed or neutered. This is important for all rabbits, but especially for apartment living, you want to make sure that your rabbit doesn't have any of those behavioral issues that can often happen with rabbits that aren't fixed. So rabbits may spray urine or scatter their poops around as a way to claim their territory. But these behaviors are largely fixed as soon as you get your rabbit spayed or neutered. It's one of those things that is important always, but it's especially important when you're living in an apartment. Because that way your rabbit won't end up damaging the floors in your apartment or it'll be less likely that they will. Getting spayed or neutered is also better for your rabbit's health overall anyway. So it's something that I always recommend regardless of your living situation. because. <laughs> especially female rabbits oh you're so cute especially female rabbits tend to get a lot of health problems also if they are not if they are left intact just a good a good piece of advice to get your rabbit fixed you are also going to want to have a basically a home base enclosure for your rabbit even if you are planning to have a free roam rabbit who is allowed to have like free free reign of the house or a room in the house, you still want to give them some kind of home base or a place where they can feel safe. This will be the place where you feed them and the place where you give them their litter box and it's just, it gives your rabbit a little bit of a, a safe zone so that even if there's some loud business going on next door, they have some place where they can come and retreat to. This will also be a place where your rabbit can go if they just want to kind of get away from everything and feel safe and comfortable. My fourth tip for keeping a rabbit in an apartment is to make sure you get an enclosure that is easy to clean. If you get a typical rabbit enclosure, I know a lot of people will have to like take it out into the back and like hose down their the like enclosure to make sure that they can actually get it clean and it can actually take a lot of work. I've known some people who <laughs> try to end up doing that work in their bathtub, but I can tell you this hay clogs up everything. It, it will clog up your bathtub, it just will. Instead get an enclosure that's a lot easier to clean. What I always recommend is getting one of these pens you can very easily clean it. You can sweep up the big bits of hay and then just vacuum the rest. Super easy to clean. And what's better is they're usually a lot bigger than your average cage, so they are a much better size for your rabbit. The fifth tip for keeping a rabbit in an apartment is to get some kind of space-saving furniture. 
So what I did to make sure that I could save some floor space while having my Ellie here in this apartment is I got a loft bed. That way I can have my bed, which is <laughs> above my head right now, and have her enclosure be the entire area underneath the bed. So it's a nice big enclosure. And I don't lose any floor space at all. It's just the same amount of space that the bed would have taken up. That is a great option if you're looking to have a lot more space for your rabbit without losing any floor space. Because sometimes apartments can be pretty small and you have all this furniture that you need to Tetris into place and oh no, now what do you do with the, with the rabbit enclosure? You can do the same, the same thing with a table that's kind of high. You can put the rabbit, the rabbit enclosure underneath the table. Just find a piece of furniture that's high enough you can put the rabbit enclosure underneath. The next tip that I have for keeping your rabbit in an apartment is to pay attention to your carpets. Rabbits have the tendency to dig into anything really, but carpets can be a, a carpets can be a big problem with rabbits. So you want to make sure that you cover areas of the carpet that your rabbit is trying to dig into. Normally this is going to be the corners of the rooms. So one thing that you can do is place furniture in the corners of the room so that your rabbit can't get there. Right now what I'm sitting on is not the carpet that's in the room, but instead it's a separate area rug that I use to cover her entire enclosure so I don't have to worry about her getting to the carpet underneath it. You can use those plastic mats that go under desk chairs. If you need a more budget option or like a, a temporary option, you can also use just cardboard boxes so the rabbit will dig into the cardboard instead. The only problem is rabbits can and will dig through the cardboard. You have to continuously replace the cardboard so that they can't get to the carpet. While we're on the topic of digging, you're also going to want to make sure that you clip your rabbit's nails. This will keep them from putting any excessive damage onto floors or walls or anything along those lines. A good rule of thumb is to make sure that their nails don't come kind of past the fur on their paw. Now this isn't going to work for all breeds of rabbits. For example, Angora rabbits have long fur or Rex rabbits have very short fur. You'll need to make sure that you pay attention to those a little bit more closely than to a typical medium furred rabbit. Generally, you're going to be wanting to clip your rabbit's nails every one to two months. Uh, closer to one month if your rabbit is on pretty much all soft surfaces, like carpeted areas, but closer to two months if your rabbit also has harder surfaces to walk or dig into, such as uh, some cement tiles or hardwood floors or things like that. But it's good to clip your rabbit's nails so that, like even on hardwood floors, they won't scratch them up too much and they won't damage the apartment because we want to do what we can to keep our rabbit from damaging the apartment so that, you know, we can get our security deposits back. The next tip I have for you is to make sure you find a way to block your baseboards. Baseboards are like right at that height where rabbits can just go up to them and chew on them. You want to find some way to get them to chew on other things, other chew toys that are not the baseboards in the apartment. Because baseboards can be very difficult to fix or to cover up if the rabbit does damage them. Some things you can do is A, block your rabbit's access to the baseboards completely around the edge of the room. You could also put furniture in the way to block your rabbit's access to the baseboards. You can also try using a bitter apple spray. You can get this uh, in stores, a uh, Granix bitter apple spray that you can spray along the baseboards. The idea is that if your rabbit goes to bite on the baseboards, it will taste bad and then they won't want to go back and bite on them some more. I do find this works kind of temporarily, so it'll work maybe for a few hours, but then the rabbit will go back again and if they don't taste it at that point, they'll go back to chewing on the baseboards. The other thing that I found that works to block baseboards, at least with Ellie, is to use some masking tape. So along that top edge that the rabbits tend to chew on, I put a strip of masking tape, just putting that all along the edge of the baseboards. And uh, so far, at least, it's been working. So <laughs> you can try that and see if it works for you also. The next tip that I want to give you is to make sure that you are very vigilant about rabbit proofing your wires, especially any wires that like 
belong to the apartment complex. Anything connecting your internet or anything connecting like the general electric lighting in the apartment, it's very, very important that you do not let your rabbit get any access to these wires because that can be a nightmare to get fixed if they end up snipping through something like that. Every once in a while, apartments will have wires that snake out of the wall for a portion of it. So check your apartment to make sure that you get all of the wires because you don't want your rabbit to snip through them. You really, really don't. That would be so bad. Any wire that you can, you want to completely get out of your rabbit's reach and make it so that they have no access to it. If you can't do that with some wires, then what you can use is this tubing, this plastic split loom tubing, and put that over the wires so that if they go to chew on it, they're just chewing on the plastic, they're not chewing on the wire. But I do find that rabbits are less likely to chew on thicker wires, so usually the plastic thing is thick enough that the rabbit's not going to try to chew on it anymore. The next tip I have for you is to litter train your rabbit. This will make it so much easier for you to clean their enclosure. It'll make it easier for you to keep track of their health and it will make sure that the apartment doesn't become a mess like every single day. If your rabbit is not litter trained already, you can start with having some of those doggy pee pads on the ground so that the, their pee won't end up seeping through the area rug onto the carpet underneath. And what you're going to do is first you, you'll look for which corner of the enclosure your rabbit is using as their bathroom because rabbits are generally clean creatures and they will choose to keep their bathroom in one area. And your job is going to be to help them associate that area with the box, the litter box. So what you do is you put some paper-based litter into the litter box along with some hay because rabbits like to munch and poop at the same time. Uh, but put that into the litter box and then put the litter box in that corner. Scoop some of the poops into the litter box and then if you can, try to seep up some of the pee onto the newspaper or something like that and put that in the litter box also. It'll help your rabbit associate their poop and their pee with the box so that they will start to use it. And that's the basic technique. If you'd be interested in me having a more in-depth video about how to litter train your rabbit, let me know. A lot of times rabbits will learn very quickly, but there can be some you know, troubleshooting depending on how stubborn your rabbit is. There are other techniques that can help if your rabbit is having trouble learning. Now the last tip I want to give you is to make sure that you have as quiet an apartment as possible. There's very little that you can do about your neighbors or sometimes like there'll be lots of loud dogs barking outside or something along those lines. But as much as you can do, keep your own apartment as a quiet and calm place so that your rabbit doesn't get too stressed out. This means you should probably limit having loud parties as much as you can because that can be pretty stressful for rabbits unless you have a particularly confident rabbit. But for the most part, you want to try and make sure that you have a very calm environment for your rabbit. Keep them on like a general routine so that they know what to expect on the day to day and that will keep them being happy bunnies and will allow them to thrive in your home. If you are interested in more information about rabbits and rabbit care and everything to do with rabbits, you can hit the subscribe button over here and the notification bell so that you know when I come out with a new video because I'll have a new video for you every week. And I really hope that I will see you next time. <laughs> have a good day.